Just how important a win do you consider this to be? It's a really important by-election win. This is more important than a normal by-election win for an opposition because it's such a big signal of a desire for change in Scotland, where the SNP have been in power for 16 years now. Uh, I'm just back from the doorsteps in Rutherglen. Uh, actually, I was there yesterday and the day before campaigning in the by-election. And you could really feel uh, a difference in the mood compared to a few years ago. Uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's a, a big signal of change. And I think that this result uh, could have reverberations not only in Scotland, but right throughout the UK. OK, so that's interesting that you think it is significant. And we're always told that we shouldn't uh, extrapolate too much from one by-election result. But do indulge me, because we're always tempted to do that. Because if this Can swing that you achieved in this by-election was replicated at a general election, it would give Labour 42 seats in Scotland. So is that what you're aiming for in the general election? We know we've got a lot of work to do. It's always been the case that to achieve a parliamentary majority across the UK, that was going to be much more difficult if we didn't recover our position in Scotland, where we went into this by-election with only one MP. Um, so if we can gain more seats in Scotland, it brings the prospect of a Labour government that much closer. Uh, we're conscious that we've still got a lot to do. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, work to do between now and the next election. We've got our conference starting in uh, Liverpool this weekend where we'll be setting out more about the kind of change that we want to bring so that that mood, that desire for change that you saw expressed in Rutherglen and Hamilton West in the by-election uh, can be felt and answered right across the country. You say you think it signifies a significant shift in mood in Scotland, and yet some people will say this by-election was peculiar in that the, the, the outgoing MP, Margaret Ferrier, was, was basically... Uh, she, she was found guilty of, of breaching COVID regulations, and the constituents, 12,000 of them, signed a recall petition against her. The party's partly being punished for that, isn't it? Well, it's a mood for change, uh, and... Uh, you know, in every by-election there are particular circumstances. Um, and I don't say we don't still have a lot of work to do. We do. We had a fantastic result last night. I think it's a big signal. But we know we've got more to do, and that's why we approach this conference with a combination of confidence in our ideas and our plans, but also conscious of the size of the task. And that's the tone that we will set uh, next week in Liverpool. That's what you'll hear from Keir Starmer when he speaks next week, from Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, and from the other leading Labour politicians who will be setting out our stall at the conference over the next few days. Well, and interesting, your, your candidate in that seat, Michael Shanks, he's just won overnight, uh, contradicted Keir Starmer on a number of issues, on gender reform, on the two-child benefit cap and on the bedroom tax during the campaign. Is that the way to success in Scotland, allowing your candidates to stray from the party line? I thought he was a wonderful candidate. I, I was very happy to campaign for Michael Shanks. I think he's going to be a great MP. Uh, look, people will have their views, but we are absolutely united uh, on wanting to do more on child poverty, uh, more to fix and renew the NHS, and more for economic growth to improve people's living standards. Michael's signature policy in that by-election was to make work pay. That's a UK-wide commitment to make sure that people at work enjoy decent pay, decent conditions. We're the Labour Party, the clue's in the name, so we'll go into this election. I believe, you know, I've been around politics for a long, long time. I think we will go into the next general election as a more united force than we have been for a generation. Uh, now, let me talk about HS2, if I can, because Labour said before the announcement that the government was going to scrap the, the Manchester leg that they wanted to see it build. So why is Keir Starmer now saying that you won't reverse the government's plans to, to abandon that leg? Well, it's a Tory fiasco, this. They've had 13 years and the costs have tripled. We did want to see the line uh, built. Uh, you know, this, so why, this not, whole, why not commit this, to, to... This whole thing then? began... Uh, when we were in government, uh, the initial announcements of, of HS2. But once the government has announced the cancellation of the project, if they start selling off land, if they reallocate resources that were for HS2 to other real projects, then we have to take those circumstances into account. It's really there's an important point here, and not just for HS2, but for other things too. If you're an opposition party and you're coming up to a general election, you have to take the world that you inherit and build from there. 
You can't take the world that you wished to inherit. So if, uh, as a result of the Prime Minister's announcement uh, at his conference this week, money is reallocated, uh, land is used for different purposes, it's not as simple in a year's time or whenever the election comes as just pressing a rewind button to this week. And that's really important for uh, your viewers and the public to understand in terms of the approach that we will take. OK, and uh, the Prime Minister said that the East-West links were far more important. They said new information had, uh, had come to light and than those linking North and South. Has he got a point? Do you agree with that? Well, the thing about the other projects that he's announced is uh, many of them have been re-announced before. This uh, Northern Powerhouse Rail that but he But do you like the general West. idea of improving like the idea things. of that. We're committed to doing that. But it's been in the last three Conservative manifestos. And another lesson that has to be learned from the HS2 fiasco is that with major infrastructure projects, you have to have a plan for delivery as well as a plan for announcement. And I think people would be forgiven for being uh, sceptical, if not cynical, about the Prime Minister uh, announcing a series of projects which have been in the last three Tory manifestos. All these road upgrades, they've been announced over and over and over again. What the country needs is a long-term plan for delivery, not just announcements. Okay. And that's the approach that we need to take. I, I have to let you go, but one quick question. The Guardian is reporting today that key figures from Tony Blair's 1997 election campaign, you'll remember it, um, which uh, are saying that Keir Starmer needs to set out a clearer policy platform. They're saying that, that Labour needs to be bolder and clearer. What do you say to that? I think we should always learn from our past moments of victory. There haven't been enough in Labour's history. And the big lesson I take from past moments of victory is reach beyond your own base and always be talking about tomorrow and not yesterday and plans for the future. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Even though we're Liverpool not always clear on what the plans week. are. We have got some great plans. We've got a great plan for dentistry today. 700,000 new appointments, tackling uh, children's uh, tooth decay. That's the kind of policy that will address what people want to hear, and you'll hear more of it over the next few days. OK, Pat McFadden, thanks very much indeed for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you.